Welcome to the second hour of the show with no name for April uh, something, 6th? 5th. 5th? Uh, only the 5th? Yeah, only the 5th. 2013. Fifth. I'm Bob Going with uh, Gavin Murdoch on my far right, and Jim Nicosia in the center, uh, taking whatever position he feels like uh, uh, <laughs> taking. He uh, swings both ways. He swings. Well, I, well, I, wouldn't, I, I wouldn't, wouldn't say that. Uh, uh, necessarily. Uh, not that there's anything wrong with it. Uh, anyway, uh, we, we talked about a lot of uh, diverse topics in the last hour, but uh, let, let's uh, start with some local issues. Uh, 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 Gavin, there was a uh, school board referendum this week. What happened there? Uh, the uh, referendum uh, passed. It was to bond for uh, two new buses. Uh, it passed uh, 220 to uh, 110. Oh, there were that many? Yeah, see, about 330, mm. 335 voters come out to uh, uh, make the decision for everybody else. How many people uh, in the district that, that could have uh, voted? Oh, 7,000, maybe? Yeah, a lot. They could have voted 7,000? Yeah, we, in, in a general school board election, we usually get a little over 2,000 people coming out yeah. for it, you know, and, and, one, and, and a lot of school districts do this for referendums on busing. You put it up separate from the, from the budget. Uh, the thought being is people come in with a different viewpoint on this than they do in the rest of the budget, and generally the rest of the budget isn't influencing this. Because the last two years, this same proposition has been turned down. Yeah, okay. well, uh, even though the budget is passed, uh, this is the, the people down. in this case, the people who vote on it are the people who are focused on the issue one way or another. In other words, if they're only coming out to say yes or no on this issue, so they've, they've thought about it one yeah. way or another. Maybe they haven't thought about it too deeply, but they thought about it enough to have a position. Right. Whereas you go in blind uh, when you're out there voting for, you know, Gavin Burdock for school board and on the budget. Uh, in general, uh, also the referendums there, you say, well, I don't know about this. I mean, I, 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 over the years, uh, my general proposition, my general thought is, uh, if I don't know what something's about, I'm voting no. <laughs> well, they did a, <laughs> We're worried about yeah, it again later. You know? You know, they did a pretty good job of getting the information out. It was, it's been in the paper, it's been on the yeah. website, it's been on Facebook, they, they did uh, things down at Inman Center, you know, to get the information out for, for people, and, uh, and it passed, it passed like 65%, so we we're very pleased about that. Uh, Have you passed your budget yet? Uh, no, the, the, the board will be it? passing the budget uh, 25th, 27th of April, and it'll go out in May for uh, the public vote. Part, part, of, part of the, pub, part of the, uh, the budget proposal that's coming up is also approving going above the, the the rate the two percent, I no our 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 the 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 budget's going out by us is not above the two percent. You know, there is. I know it's not above, but there's a provision in there to let you go above. No, I think there is. No. Well, no. Gavin would know there's he's no, on the board. There's, well, there's, it doesn't no, matter. That doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's no are you saying? <laughs> are you suggesting <laughs> that he's not going to be truthful with us? No, no. no I, I, he, he maybe he doesn't. I maybe he doesn't know it's no stuck reason, in there. Maybe huh? he doesn't read that. Didn't it, read that to particular. Not not fraud. There are other school districts that are going to have to go above the uh, the tax cap. Yes, there are. Our, our, ours is not. We uh, the, the tax levy uh, will be no greater than last year's tax levy. There's no increase in the amount of funding that the uh, taxpayers are going to of the of the Great Anderson School is going to have to have to pay uh, in there. So we're, we're ple pleased about that. Uh, which doesn't mean that some people's taxes aren't going to go up. Right. Depending upon the equalization rate, right. there's portions of the right. school district that the taxes are going to go up. And that has nothing to do with us. It has everything to do with their assessment and equalization rate. Right. You know, okay. so uh, they were very, very... Now, have we, uh, have we reached the point where uh, petitions are being circulated uh, yet uh, uh, for the school board elections? They, I think that's... Um, yeah, I think people can pick up their petitions now. Uh, there's two. There's two people uh, up on the for re-election. Carol Grieco and John Battisti are up for election. Are they going to run again? I do not know. Uh, okay, so they haven't said one way or another. They haven't said point. one way. Not, not, not to you. Not to me. Not or to publicly. Me. Or publicly. So yeah. I, I don't know, and I don't know anybody else in the community who's going to be running. That'll that information will be filtered out in the next uh, ne next few weeks uh, uh, to everybody. So, but we're we're pleased that it passed because we. The reason we need 
two new buses, it's two of our buses have failed inspection. And once they fail, you need, they cannot go on the road until all the until items are, are, are addressed. One of the buses is going to cost $12,000 to uh, repair. And the other one, I think, was $8,000. I think we talked about this last who's time. The, uh, whose estimate for repairs is that? Whose estimate repairs? It's um, from our uh, uh, director of um, transportation and maintenance and grounds. They got a. So he they, they, he 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 went out and got a got a quote he got of what estimates. it was going to be. He got he an got estimate estimates. Okay. What, what it was going to cost. And um, you know, and and the issue now, just like 99% of the time up here, is that the carriages are the part that is yeah. going to pass. So there there is now. Uh, a requirement that all buses sold in New York State be undercoated. So the, the new buses we're getting will be undercoated when we purchase them. And we can also, if, if we choose to have a, uh, another service, do an additional undercoating on there. Rusty Jones. I don't know who yeah. it is. Uh, yeah. Whatever. They can do that because that's, that's what doesn't, do, doesn't pass the inspection. Uh, now, the carriages. Uh, and that's the big, uh, the big question on, uh, on the talk shows and the uh, scuttlebutt around the city is, what happens to the bus now that you can't run it? Where does it go? We, do they scavenge parts from them, or do they just send there, them to South a, America? There, there's, a, there, there's a couple things that uh, can be done. We can put them out in auction, yeah. okay? Uh, or they're also soliciting <clears throat> uh, quotes from the, the, the people who are going to be doing the undercoating on our buses to see if they would purchase those buses. Because every state, doesn't have the same requirements. Mm -hmm. Every well, country does it. Okay, yeah, <laughs> yeah. That, 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 that's, that's the problem. You know, somebody might be able to buy one of these buses for, you know, $30,000, put 12000 bucks into it, and down in Georgia, and they, they, they can go with it. You know, but for us, the, the cost of... Or, you know, or like buses, the Partridge family might be interested. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> or use it for the band bus right. in some other district. Uh, so, I mean, there's, there's a, and, they, and the board will be uh, given... The choice, I, I believe, at our next board meeting, what we are going to decide to do. They're going to get some quotes from various sources of on these buses, what we can do. Well, you're not planning on keeping it. Uh, no, we are not keeping these buses. Yeah. No. no yeah. You can make a camper out of one. Well, that's what I'm saying. Yeah, that's like the Partridge family yeah, yeah. Uh, type thing. So. Uh, now, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think we talked about this previously that uh, uh, the. Y y you don't get the 90% reimbursement for repair works on old buses, do you? You do not. You do not get any so, reimbursement so for it's, repair it's, work. You know, that's kind of a crazy thing from the state's uh, point of view. Uh, they're, they're, in fact, forcing you to buy new buses yeah. instead of repairing the old ones because it makes far more economic sense to just get a new one, right? Well, yeah, of course. Yeah. That's their thinking. That's for uh, so, uh, so what does a bus cost these days? Uh, uh, a buck to a buck ten. Okay, so uh, so uh, you're paying ten percent of that, which is like uh, ten or eleven thousand right. dollars, or you could pay twelve thousand dollars to to repair uh, an old crummy one. Correct. Yeah, yeah. and uh, they'll they'll bond that uh, amount uh, over five years, so it, it it spreads it out. The state doesn't give you any money additional money up front if you just pay for it off the bat. So financially, it makes more sense to to bond it for for the five years for that. That additional amount, and uh, but they don't. They they're which is also silly. Which is which is also silly. Yeah, so but you're 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 borrowing ten thousand dollars. They're requiring you to borrow the money. Yeah, yeah. I mean, there's there's well, they're not requiring you well, to borrow the money. You can pay for it outright, and then you you, you bite it for four years. It's it's many things that the state does is not thought out. It's not cost effect of anybody, you know. Yeah. As soon as you use the word state in any sentence, you know it's going to be an oxymoron, okay. You know, you don't, you, the last thing you want to do is have yeah. the state come and say we're here right. to help And there's no, there's no incentive yeah. for anybody in the state to do it right because, hey, it's just a drop in the bucket in the overall yeah. budget scheme and so it's, a, yeah. so it's ignored. Uh, yeah. Or they'll, or they'll study, they'll, they'll have uh, uh, 40 guys uh, making uh, six figures a year study it for uh, four or five years and then come up with a recommendation that never gets implemented. Oh man! Yeah. But I remember when we converted the, uh, we did a computer conversion uh, of the court records. Uh, it we 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 used to have a proprietary system, database system, that was 
vastly inferior to anything you could uh, uh, get off the shelf at Best Buy. Okay, uh, antiquated everything. So they finally decide they're going to, you know, come into the modern era. Uh, but they also were going to make it universal over all the courts in the in the district, if not the state. I forget. Yeah. They took one employee from each court and had them work on this for like a year. Constantly uh, uh, con converting this, uh, converting the system, and it, it was all stuff that really they could have done, as they say, off the shelf and started over. Uh, but how, well, what do we, what do we want, and uh, you know, what do we want the database to, to say? Well, I mean, it was good that they were doing these things; they were getting input from everybody. Well, you know, but it was originally being developed by people who didn't actually work in the courts. And I remember we had a judges meeting, and uh, and they're pointing out, well, here's here's the proposal for the new system. I don't know. I said, well, what do we need that for? What do we need? You know, why are this is what we need? That we don't. Uh, this information is useless to us. And we don't, we don't need this to uh, to keep records or, or do anything. Right. Uh, oh, okay. Uh, but you might but, want somebody but, to know. But it's like you know, you know. The ele they're, they're making the elephant in the, in the committee, right? Uh, and, and it cost a fortune in, in, in employee time alone uh, uh, just doing that. Because uh, somebody said, well, this is, uh, we like this system better. Okay. No, it's, it's part of the bureaucracy that gets created. And, they, and then they would buy uh, I, I remember they were, they were converting everybody to uh, Windows 3.1 at a point in time when Microsoft wasn't even supporting it anymore, <laughs> you know, or, or buying buying Pentium threes uh, when we were already ten generations yeah. past that. You know, there was just an article, a little article in the paper the other day uh, about the uh, bridge over on 5S that they're going to be repairing the two the two parallel bridges over yes. by Karen's, and they came out and somebody from the state said we've listened to the input and the report and everything. So we're going to do it this way. We're not going to close everything all down at the same time because it would interfere with fire protection. So we're, we're listening to what the, Why would you even think to do it any other way to start uh, uh, with? To start with. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's the, the absurdity. They've, no, they've got two two bridges and, and, and you fix one and then you fix the other and then you keep two lanes open all the time. How about but, that? But yeah, but apparently the uh, the... The old highway bridge is uh, is not going to even even when they fix it is not going to be able to support two lanes. But nevertheless, you're right. You've got the uh, yeah. Sure, it'll be easier for the guy fixing them to have both bridges closes, closed. But what insanity! The the the, the, the parallel piece was that they're <clears throat> they're working on the twin bridges on the north way, and they're also going to be working on this Latham Circle. Yeah. Okay, that's going to be closed down. But they they. They've said that one's going to be open during the week and the other one's going to be open during the weekend. Mm -hmm. So they're all not going to be closed down at the same time. But you know, you just think like, do you know how many thousands of people depend upon this to get? You and, know, and, you and, get and, and and how many how many dozens of people are making this stupid decision in the first place? <laughs> oh, it, it, what it's obvious. You've yeah. Gotta have a committee. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. committee uh, of intelligent people. That's the first requirement to be. Uh, I, I was involved in. Uh, you know, as a either I, I think I was still in law school. Uh, I was helping Vince Vincenzo on a trial of a case where I remember when the girl maybe the girl got killed on the bridge across from City Hall. Uh, this goes back a long ways now, probably back into the 70s. Yeah. It has to be because I was in law school in the 70s. It might even go back into the 60s. I forget. Uh, but they they had opened that the the the, the crisscross bridges. In '68 or '69, uh, uh, and then these kids were uh, going from downtown to Market Hill and taking the high bridge. There was no sidewalk on the bridge, and so one girl gets killed, the other gets seriously injured, and, uh, uh, and they're like teenagers at the time. And uh, so they're they're still in the state. Uh, for creating a dangerous situation, uh, not putting the sidewalk 
on the bridge than when they built it. There is one now, and it's because of this lawsuit. Uh, the, the engineers at the state, their answer was, well, we have a rule that we don't put in sidewalks where there weren't any before. And that's it. That was their only reason. It's a reason that makes no sense in this situation because they're creating a direct link between Church Street and Market Hill that didn't exist before right. uh, that, that people are going to be using by the thousands. So they weren't replacing anything. They were putting something Yeah, there. because it wasn't there before. That's the only reason. But it wasn't there before. Yeah, because it wasn't there before. Well, neither was the bridge, you know. <laughs> uh, it, 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 it's like there's no thought given to it at all. This, is, you know, we uh, we have this rubric and the, and, and that's it. Uh, and as you say, uh, the, the 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 five S thing is is beyond uh, the beyond incomprehensible. The pale, beyond the pale, it just it's, <laughs> it's, it's so obvious. Uh, it's a main highway. Cheapers. <laughs> You know? Oh, wow. And if you take that out, you can't get there from here. Well, okay. Yeah, well, so cool. well, we got the, the land bank. Oh, yeah. my God. Yeah, I saw, now, the, I saw the picture of the house in the paper today. Yeah, yeah. well, we, we know all about that house. Uh, uh, let me tell you, it's absurd not to tear that down, uh, to, to put more money into it. Who's, look, this yeah. house. They're going to give it to the land bank. They're going to give it to the and, and stretch this out, and the land bank will come up with some money to rehab this house or whatever. Let me tell you, if this house was rehab rehabable, it would have been done by private enterprise. Anybody could buy this house for a dollar from the city and fix it up if there was any money to be made in it. The fact of the matter is, it's going to, no matter how much money you're going to put into it, you're not going to get out of it. Uh, when you're done, it's not going to be habitable. It wasn't habitable when the people were habiting it. <laughs> it wasn't, uh, uh, and I know. Okay, uh, uh, so it, it, we're we're what five years? Six? Are we in the sixth year of this administration? I guess we're in the sixth year of sixth this, year. Of mm -hmm. this administration, and we're nowhere near where we were when we left off. No. Uh, we had a system in place. It took several years to develop, but it was pretty smoothly running when we left office, and it was immediately abolished as soon as we got there. Immediately. Uh, I forget, what did we call it? The uh, Property Disposition Property Disposition Committee. Uh, we had a Property Disposition Committee, and what we did was we took an inventory of all the city properties, city-owned properties. We we examined them, found out what their conditions were. We made recommendations whether they should be uh, torn down, whether we could rehab them, whether we should sell them, whether we, sh uh, uh, whether sh we should sell empty lots to the neighbors uh, first uh, uh, and then to the general public, and all this stuff. Uh, uh, all stuff that had been up for public auction, and, the, and, we, and we made recommendations as to the public mm -hmm. auctions. All this. Uh, on the committee were me as the corporation counsel, uh, uh, because I prosecuted the, well, for a variety of reasons, but I prosecuted the, the code violations. We had somebody from the, uh, from the codes. Uh, yeah, we had the, the, the fire chief. Uh, we, I think we had somebody from the police department too, didn't we? I forget. Uh, but but from, from uh, somebody from the controller's office. Mm -hmm. but it was, oh, it was the assessor uh, was on the committee. All people who knew about these properties from different points of view. What were the taxes owed on this property? What's, uh, what is this property worth? What, is, uh, you know, what are we going to get? Uh, what, what kind of code violations need to be corrected when we sell this? And, and then we would, uh, we would take uh, proposals from people for the purchase of these properties that had already been up for public auction and gotten no bids. And these people would come in, they would present in writing their plans for the property. Uh, their financial backing uh, for doing what they want to do. There'd be letters from banks saying, uh, so it took a while to develop this, but eventually it was pretty smooth running. Uh, we would meet once a month. We would uh, take proposals. Uh, uh, people would come from all, yeah. frankly, all over the place uh, to discuss various properties and what their plans were. 
And it, it, was, it may not have been ideal, but it, 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 worked. It, it worked, and we were constantly doing stuff. Well, now it's like nothing has been done in six years, in the five years since, or five and a half years since, and uh, and now we're you know we're putting it off further by well, we'll put this property in the land bank, and then eventually somebody will plan to do something with it. Well, this property's been empty now for about four years, I think. Uh, it, it's got to be absolutely. It was in horrible shape when they moved out, and it's got to be well, e even worse now. They wore masks. Taking a yes. Out, they wore masks. That's how bad it was. Yeah. So it had to have been uh, pretty moldy and, uh, yeah. and grungy in there. Let me tell you, once the mold gets in, yeah. there's nothing you can do. Just tear it down. But I, I don't understand why they picked one property. I mean, weren't they supposed to take over most of the properties? Or they just pick and choose what ones they think there. they can... I don't, uh, I'm not sure they know. I see the Buddhists uh, uh, won a case in court. Yeah, yeah I saw that. Yeah. Liberty, uh, the one on Liberty and... And the one Leonard. on uh, uh, Yeoman and uh, Leonard, yeah. 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 But I don't know what they're going to do with the one on Leonard because... Uh, That's, the walls are falling down. Well, not only that, the the, the guy stripped out the, the copper and uh, the wire and everything else. I mean, I guess there was, uh, from what I read in the paper, there's a condition in the in the decision that the says decision. if they want to maintain it, they have to make it habitable, habitable. or at least code, uh, not, I don't, not literally living in it, but uh, yeah, so it has it to be up the code. The code problems, which include fire protection, which was, I mean, sprinkler if system. not taken out, it was yeah. accidentally yeah. removed. Yeah. Not accident, not, I mean, it's not, not through fault of their own. But, uh, the midnight movers came in and took uh, it. The midnight movers. So I don't know, I don't know what's going to happen with their, uh, the, the, the Bring cases on their other properties as well, or just those two? Because they those own, two, own, I think, own because those were the, the biggest uh, assessments. I want to read to you an editorial from the recorder on a not particularly related issue, but also dealing with city, uh, with property in the city. All right. It's called Richly Deserved Support. This is from the Amsterdam Evening Recorder. And from what? Well, I'll get to that. Uh, there now seems to be a very good prospect that Amsterdam will have a new hotel. A site that is ideal in every respect has been chosen and an option has been taken on property just west of the Century Club on Guy Park Avenue. We say the site, we say the site is ideal, this is a recorder editorial, uh, because it is located on one of the city's main residential streets, is not too far from the business section of the city, and most important is on the main east-west artery of passenger car motor traffic. Visitors to the city will have little difficulty in finding the hotel, and it will be most convenient for the thousands of tourists who come this way. This is even before the bridge to Noah, which we'll get to, remind me. Uh, credit for bringing this project thus far uh, along the way to realization belongs distinctly to the Amsterdam Chamber of Commerce. Back in 1924, shortly following the campaign which united the old Board of Trade and the Chamber of Commerce, the General Organization of Company of Chicago made on behalf of the Chamber a survey of the hotel needs of the community. Even then, there was need of a new hotel, but there was too much public opposition. <laughs> I wonder what form that took. Yeah, yeah. Uh, a number of surveys have, have been made since that time by the Hockenberry Hotel System, Inc., which has had a wide and successful experience and it has been obvious to even the most casual observer that the need of modern hotel accommodations has grown with the passing of the years until now it would be poor business indeed to postpone it longer. It is encouraging to find the Chamber of Commerce committees which have dealt with the preliminaries so completely unanimous in the decision to put the new hotel issue to a test through the launching at this time of a financial campaign. In the final analysis, the success of this venture must depend upon support of it by our own people. Fortunately, the effort is to be made at an auspicious time. There never has been and never will be a better that our people will reject this opportunity to provide the community with the accommodations which all modern cities enjoy is unthinkable. The recorder is glad to add its voice to that of the Chamber of Commerce in asking support of the project. What's the date on that? That was uh, 1946. I didn't write it down <laughs> here. Uh, and and they'd been talking about it since 1924, at least. <laughs> Back when the city was at its 
peak. Yeah. Uh, when things have been growing steadily during the Coolidge uh, prosperity, uh, when the headlines in the paper were the, the, were the, were the serious economic problems in Amsterdam because there weren't enough people to fill all the jobs that were available, you know, and what, mm -hmm. uh, how critical it was to the community. Uh, the the follow-up on this is uh, that, that the local businesses pledge something like half a million dollars or something uh, to this project. They had, the, they had all the financing available for it. They bought the property, uh, which is now the Dollar General, uh, at various times was uh, Grand Union and, mm -hmm. then, uh, yeah. and then the uh, OTB in that building. Uh, they bought the property and it just made no economic sense to follow through with it. And uh, somewhere around 50-51, they just abandoned it. And what, what, what money was left uh, went Ooh. back to the original pledgers. Uh, oh, and it uh, and uh, that was it. It just, it just folded. They sold the property to, uh, ultimately to the Grand Union and got out from under it. But every generation, this is 1924, 1946, and then in the late 60s, they're doing it again. Yeah. We need, we, uh, the, the yeah. future of the new Amsterdam is yeah, dependent on one. the holiday. So we get, so, so urban renewal money is used to, uh, and, the, and the city donates its west side parking lot, uh, uh, west side of downtown, west side of Market Street, the west side parking lot. And the and the urban renewal takes down the Peter Schuyler Hotel and all the old Orpheum Theater and yeah. all those buildings, uh, Kathy's Restaurant, all those buildings on that side of Market, the building where the Republican headquarters was right. back in the Masonic, the Masonic Temple. What? Yeah, well, yes, that was yeah. on that block yes, it too, was. wasn't it? Yeah, uh, yeah. So uh, when the, the Masons got the money to build the um, new place to replace the, uh, the, the music, the music store, Morrison went, and Palmer. Morrison and Palmer went. Yeah. Uh, well, a whole mess of them. Yeah. And, and so, uh, so the Holiday Inn was built largely using urban renewal funds. Uh, and then when they got into some financial trouble, they came they, in, the, in the 70s, they went to, uh, or, or no, was it in the early, it 80s. was in the 80s. Uh, they go to Ada uh, and said, we need $2 million to rehab the place or whatever it was. Ada gives them the money, and the owner uh, promptly uh, gives it to his wife to develop uh, property in Ohio. Uh, and then later declares bankruptcy, and Ada got caught holding the bag on the $2 million part, and ends up owning the Holiday Inn uh, uh, at that point. And it goes into you know, foreclosure, or the and the sale, and uh, Joe Isabel put money in it, and he lost every penny he put in it because somebody else won the bid, and, uh, and, and now it's got to the point where it's been foreclosed again. And what happens? The city gets involved and stops the foreclosure sale and says, look, let's, what this city needs is a, uh, yeah. if only we had a good modern downtown hotel and we'll find some money to put into it and all this stuff, or we're doing it all, all over again. All over again. Doomed to repeat, you know, right? Well, Those who don't learn the lessons of history are doomed to repeat. Them. Yeah, well, we need that uh, new hotel there because all because the, all the, all the, all the, because the people are coming, coming in for the bridge. For the bridge. They're, they're, uh, they're okay. Well, they won't be able to get the new hotel to the, to the new hotel. Well, well, well that's another here. loan. See, they have to float another loan to make the stairway to get off the bridge on the north side because there's no way to get off right now. Right. You have to stay, stay on it or turn around and go back to the south side. You've got you to go back. So, yeah, it has to be a round trip. Yeah, it's got to, you know. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah, imagine, imagine you're, you're, you're one of the 200,000 people a year coming to Amsterdam and you've got to see the, you got to see the bridge. And they, you park your car. Well, I don't know where you park. 200,000 cars but uh, on the south side, but you park your car somewhere on the south side and you walk over this new bridge and say, let's go downtown. I want to see Dan Weaver's store. Yeah. I want to, well, let's shoot a couple of games of pool. Yeah. Uh, and, uh, and this is a nice way to go. So you get all the way over <laughs> to the other side of the river. You walk a half a mile or something and uh, there's no way to get to Main Street. <laughs> Uh, unless, unless you take the elevator right. up over to the mall uh, put up a and go another uh, half mile. Uh, they can put up a zip line from. Uh, 
from the from oh, the oh you walk back and you come so over the, the other bridge. You walk Hard back bridge. and you go up over the other bridge where there's already a sidewalk that takes you to downtown, <laughs> which is much shorter <laughs> than the one they're proposing. Uh, you know, it's but it, you only get only get half the view coming over that yeah, bridge. You can't well. see south; you can only see west, and not east; you can see west. Uh, no, 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 no! Time out. No, you actually no, have no. a better view from the existing from, bridge because, you're higher, because up, you can, you're, higher you're higher up and you can look in both directions. Whereas the new bridge will only have a view of the old bridge on one side, and okay. then. Uh, now you really can't even see. You won't even be able to see Riverlink Park uh, from the because the new bridge, or the old bridge, is in the way of the view. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, well, you may so be, you, you know, if you go like this, so uh, you don't know where you're going then. <laughs> well, you don't know till you get over there. Then you well, come back, and by now you've gone a mile, and you're and you're still no closer to the pool hall than you were when you started. They don't know where they're going anyway, so. It doesn't Gee, that, matter. That, that facade looks nice though on the pool. Hall. Uh, yes, it does. Yes, it does. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Well, thank God, uh, because. The old one who, who was, it was pretty bad uh, uh, through no fault of their own uh, yeah, but it nice when the Elks Club re showed up. Uh, yeah, hopefully this will this will be good. Yeah. So I, I mean I wish everybody well downtown, but uh, don't think the new train station and the new bridge is going to uh, add ten cents to your uh, to your business. Uh, well, uh, she she claims that uh, that she has developers that uh, she's talking to to uh, uh, her and economic development looking. Talking to developers for the park, or Chalmers Park, yeah, and the the the, the train station, and the motel. How are they? And she wants a, a different developer in there. Well, maybe the hotel can go into the land bank. That's a thought. Yeah. <laughs> mm. <laughs> Mike McKenney has an idea. Mike, Mike, Mike wants to uh, turn it over to DSS and uh, let them uh, house all those people who, uh, who got kicked out of every other place they've lived. Uh, yeah. <coughs> That'll make it last a little. Uh, It'll increase the life expectancy for a week or two. You know. Uh, uh, the. Uh, or you know, you can turn it into a. Uh, uh, skateboard park, maybe of some sort. The, 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 uh, 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 make the old pool into a skateboard park. Yeah. A casino. We're going to build a casino. That's yeah. it. Uh, isn't that the the big the big thing now? Well, I thought the mall was going to be the casino. I don't think Mr. Chester will let it. Uh, uh, well, he might. No, a, well, you know, I mean, he's you know, this is right. He might not necessarily keep the property forever. You know, uh, you know, I'm sure if. He, Good offer comes along, he'll take it. Oh, I'm sure he will. I'm sure he will. Uh, but I, I say he's done. A, he's done all right with it. That, that that you know, there's no stores in there, but the the mall itself is pretty well. There's, High occupancy there's a couple, rate. but it's uh, the occupancy rate yeah. is pretty decent yeah. actually down there. Uh, and you know, it's convenient for him because you know he can put a couple of his own businesses in there. You know, I think he owns he owns the uh, hardware store, right? Yes. Yeah. Uh, 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 you know, of course, it's on the Cranesville Block and the radio station uh, are his. I heard that uh, he's rehabbing the bank building. Now, which one? He owns two of them: the Key Bank or the State the Bank? The Key Bank. Okay. The Key Bank that he's uh, he's well, like I said, another rumor that he's. That he's rehabbing it so that he can move there, so he can, you know, live in the on the first floor or the second floor. Really? And he all and he has someone looking at the uh, the other bank. Huh. Uh, They're both, you know, pretty decent buildings. The Key Bank yes. building needs, uh, you know, yeah, some. That needs a lot of work. Well, it, it needs a couple major things, or at least it did last I knew. It needed a new heating system and it needed a new elevator. Well, uh, if he's if he's going to live in the building, well, he doesn't cool. he doesn't have to rehab the uh, the upper floors. All he has to rehab is the well. If you're going to live on. in the building, you ought to live on the seventh floor. If he's got to take an elevator up anyway, you might as well go to no. the seventh floor. So yeah, not. that's true. That's true. I had the penthouse suite, you know, uh, when, when I when I first started practicing law. That was your uh, spot. Yeah, I I actually had the 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 back. East corner uh, facing the river and, and on one side, so I, 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 I had a really nice view. Uh, I was only and it was the, it must have been like the least 
the least, least desirable, the least desirable <laughs> office in the building, or I wouldn't have had it. Uh, <laughs> but it was probably the best. best uh, well, uh, one of the problems was that it was right under a black roof, and in summer it got <laughs> blasted <laughs> hot in there. You know, but you know, you open the windows, you get a breeze off the river. It was a, uh, uh, but the yeah, it locked the heat in. That's I was only in the building once uh, on the upper floors. I was in the John Mysick's office, and yeah. he had a he had a nice suite of offices there. When sure, he was there. And yeah. the guy the guy used to run the elevator. A, I had a guy in there and close yep. the gate there and yep. sit there. I remember my grandparents' number of times going up. I don't remember what we were up going for, but I remember the elevator and it was. My father had an office in there. Uh, in the uh, early 60s, uh, on the fourth floor, I think is where Rocky McEwen ended up, uh, I think. Yeah. Uh, and Walter Goings Insurance Agency was next door, so you had going and going. Uh, yeah, that's uh, things were always going and going. Uh, well, anyway. Uh, but those are those are the, the the things that I heard this past week. That's uh, but no confirmation from anybody. So uh, There's still rumors. Still rumors. Yeah. When I see the trucks there doing repair work in the bank bank building, then we'll say, well, maybe it's true. Well, that's cool. Have you been in the? Well, uh, they, uh, they're spending a lot of money on the uh, the United Way building. I'm, who is who owns that building? Yeah. United Way, they don't own it, do they? No, United Way sold it to uh, Urban Renewal, who is... Urban Renewal or Ada? Ada. 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 Yeah, Ada took it over, so they spent... Somebody, the one article in the paper, they are spending a couple hundred thousand dollars in there to re rehab that building. Uh, they they could have sold it to somebody. The guy wanted to buy the building for, I don't know, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000, and they wouldn't sell it to him. Wow. They wouldn't sell it to them, but, but they gave it to Ada. Wow. I haven't been up, uh, you know, speaking of rehabbing buildings, I, haven't, I have not been up to the uh, Walter Elwood Museum uh, new site in a, in a week and a half or so, but uh, oh wow, what rapid progress is being made up there. I, I, absolutely astonishing. Got all kinds of uh, help coming in. Uh, uh, in about a week's time, they uh, I think they filled two dumpsters, huge dumpsters, uh, full of uh, trash from the building. Uh -huh. uh, uh, the painting has uh, started. The, the uh, new rug is uh, coming in. I think they're getting uh, uh, a donation from uh, a Bigelow company of uh, some carpeting. Really? Yeah. Oh. Uh, and uh, of course, Bigelow. When I say Bigelow, that includes Mohawk because they're all under the oh, same yeah, umbrella bro. now. Yeah. So, uh, so the so the old carpet companies are. Uh, are coming back in, and of course that's uh, you know it, it, that's where the Sanford started. Uh, along the along the line, uh, we we got some money uh, to be used uh, solely for purchasing new artifacts, and uh, you know to replace some of that stuff we lost in the flood. And and uh, one of the things we purchased is a 19th century uh, Sanford and Sons. Uh, carpet uh, mm. that, that, that was for sale somewhere, in, mm -hmm. I think in Paducah or somewhere, <laughs> somewhere, somewhere thereabouts. Maybe it, maybe it belonged to your daughter. I'm not sure. Uh, that was the one that was in the Waldorf, I think. Uh, no, that one. That one yeah, is. Uh, life. That one is. That was a Mohawk, and that's floating around. Lord, Lord knows where that is now. The last. Uh, it was on a national tour back in the in the 40s. Uh, I don't know what oh, happened to it after that. And. Uh, by the way, remind me to give, give you the you picture of that. Back, yeah. Uh, yeah. Uh, we've got a nice picture of uh, Gavin's grandfather with that rug before really? it left before it left Amsterdam. Wow. Uh, plus another picture of it in the Waldorf. The uh, what was that called? The Wheel of Life. Yeah, the Wheel of Life. Life. Yeah. What a spectacular! Uh, I mean, in the days before computers, I can't believe uh, what it must have taken to. They used to use paper and they did punches on it to to go through. But I mean, the colors. Yeah, I mean, it, it, I mean, it was obviously uh, I, it, the looms were early computers. When you get right down yeah, to it, yeah. they they, yeah. they found, you know you'd have these punch card patterns that would uh, enable them to do that. But what they worked like seven months on that rug, something oh, like that. Forever. It was incredible. Forever. Uh, 
uh, but at every level, I mean, the design mm -hmm. and the and the execution of it and the and the dyeing and the. Yeah. Uh, and there were some very unique colors in there that they couldn't take out of their batch batch dyes that they yeah. had to be created in a sufficient amount to make sure you got through the whole whole thing and had all the same shades of it. It was a very involved process. And uh, now they, they the, were the the story is that it replaced a mosaic of the same design that yes. was made by a famous artist. Yeah. And you, you know, you got to wonder I don't uh, what the Waldorf is thinking when they when they've got this work of art in their floor yeah. and they decide to cover it up with a rug, and uh, but they they can't just cover it up. They have to recreate the, the mosaic. So yeah. years later, when they rip the rug up, the, the, the everybody's is. forgotten the mosaic is underneath, and all of a sudden this work of art comes back to the back yeah. to the floor, which I, I believe is still there, isn't it? I believe uh, I, don't. I haven't been down there. And I haven't been, I haven't been down. down to the Waldorf in a long time, but. Uh, but then when they ripped the rug out, then the original rug went on tour around the country because I've got an mm -hmm. article from one of the old papers of, uh, of it of being somewhere in Idaho or somewhere thereabouts. I read that article, but I thought it was going to come back here unless, unless it was a different car. Well, it could it, Who knows? It uh, I, it'd be nice to track it down, actually. Yeah. Uh, boy, I'd love to have that. Uh, uh, we've got the room for it in the, in the, in the room. Yeah. Yeah, well, one thing one thing I almost got and uh, and didn't is the uh, Oval Office rug that we made uh, from uh, from Olympus Has Fallen. Uh, yeah, Jamie but, Jamie had an opportunity to grab it because uh, it was getting tossed and uh, and he didn't just it was too big for him to throw in, the, in his car. He just didn't have the. <laughs> I said, "Geez, you know, ooh, put it put it wrap it in brown paper and mail it to me." You know. Uh, of course, we have. Uh, I, I told Elaine about this when she was a little impressed. This rug here, this rug here, does appear in the movie a couple of spots. Uh, uh, there's one version of it. I, I'm pretty sure this, the, the the one we have in this room, came from the landing on the White House staircase. Uh, but it's also the same design coming down the stairs. Uh -huh. Uh, you know this wheat design or whatever it is uh, on the side, red rug with. You know, of course, you're, you're not looking at it like we are, folks. But it's, uh, <laughs> if you can see it, it's right. But uh, go see Olympus Has Fallen, a really good movie. Uh, uh, and and then it appears, uh, yeah. There, there, there's a wide version at the foot of the stairs, and then the, it's on the staircase. Uh, but the, this piece, I think, came from the landing. Uh, if you haven't seen it, it's quite good. Uh, the really, is, uh, Olympus Has Fallen. Oh, the movie. Yeah, uh, we we saw uh, Abraham Lincoln finally. Did you uh, last week? Uh, and there are many things I like about it. Some some a little bit of it doesn't quite ring true, but the performances are great. Uh, you know, the British guy playing uh, playing Lincoln uh, gets the Kentucky Daniel Indiana Daniel uh, Indiana Illinois dialect. Yeah. Perfectly. He is so. It really is like you're watching the real Lincoln. The way he plays that part. He plays the wit well. He plays uh, the serious stuff well. He plays the that 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 scene where he goes off on the wife is really. Even though nobody was there to see it, it is, it is so authentic. And Sally Field can play a crazy woman or a woman on the edge better than anybody. She did the same thing in uh, ER. When she played uh, played the mother of one of the characters oh. and who's bipolar, and yeah. of course back then they didn't know how to treat bipolar. They just put you in the, as ultimately they did. She was put in the insane asylum. Yeah. But Daniel Day Lewis has always been noted for his immersion in his characters. When he uh, played um, Hawkeye in the yeah. Last Mohegans, he spent two or three weeks in Troy. Because yeah. it was determined that Troy had the accent most authentic, authentic, most authentic. to what the wow. accent of the people in the Northeast had back during the French Indian War. And he spent two or three months down in Alabama with a uh, reenactor learning how to do all the things. Yeah. That Hawkeye would do. He learned. He learned to load a muzzle loader on the on the run. How to shoot a muzzle loader. How to throw the hatchet. All this stuff. And and for for Lincoln, I forget where he was he, living. He spent. And and he 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 dressed as Lincoln did for three or four, three months, or four months without 
coming out of character. To I mean, we have no movies of Abraham Lincoln, obviously, but you got to say he moved like you would expect Lincoln to move, and he's not anywhere near as tall as Lincoln. They no. had to do some tricky stuff with the cameras, but he projected tall. Yeah. yeah. You, you know? Uh, and, 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 and Tommy Lee Jones as uh, Thaddeus Stevens uh, was outstanding. I mean, he's a guy who usually plays his parts over the top, and here he's playing a guy who is over the top, who has to restrain himself. <laughs> a bit, yeah. So Tommy Lee Jones, the actor, is restraining himself, playing a guy who is restraining himself. Uh, yeah, but is it? Here's what I appreciated about the movie, particularly as an historian, and that is that uh, the authors and the director did not insult your intelligence by giving you too much expository background. If you knew uh, the background of, uh, uh, of Seward and the background of Stanton and the background of Thaddeus Stevens, uh, all the better for understand and Blair, mm -hmm. all the better for understanding the characters uh, because they played them right. Their backstories, if you know them, show up in their characters without your having to be beaten over the head with it. Uh, and, it, and by focusing on that small section of, of, uh, of, of Lincoln's administration, they, they were able to really get the gist of the, of, uh, of the man and the moment uh, and the, the difficulty of his position. Uh, uh, just great. Uh, and, and again, uh, I think a far better movie than Argo, which wins the, wins the best picture. Well, that's to say. It is what it is. Yeah. Uh, it is There's quite is. an article in the Gazette today on uh, Beyond the Pines. Go ahead, go ahead. Keep talking. They, uh, they gave, uh, gave a, a rundown on uh, all, the, all the different places where the movie had taken place, where they shot the movie. It was quite interesting. At uh, Lincoln? No, no. Oh, uh, Beyond, Beyond the Pines. Pines. Beyond the Pines. Oh, what is that? That's the movie that was shot in Schenectady. Oh, 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 oh. I was there. Uh, uh, I went to uh, the stadium restaurant. Okay. The uh, when next, they were next to the old ballpark. Yeah. yeah when they were shooting the uh, that movie, in which it, isn't there anymore. Where the old ballpark used yeah. to be. Yeah. Because uh, 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 I, you know, I posted the links uh, uh, Jamie had given me on uh, the special effects and uh, Olympus has fallen. I. I uh, and they're so it. fascinating to watch because Washington D.C., which looks so real in the movie, is Shreveport, Louisiana, uh, and uh, and it's it's unbelievable how they turn uh, some cow pastures in Shreveport into downtown Washington. Yeah, that was. Uh, that was I mean, all they have is a limited facade of the White House that they built, which is uh, which is just a uh, 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 yeah. Uh, and from that, they, they recreate the, not only the White House, but everything down there from a thousand different angles. Yeah, it, it's, it's amazing the, the work that goes into filming something that you see, and you don't consider all the people that were involved in all the yeah. minutia of it. Uh, There's a program on um, Sci-Fi Channel, it's called The Face Off, and it's, it's a, a competition for makeup artists, and the stuff they yeah, they yeah, they make yeah, I mean the, yeah, all the appliances they yeah. put on these actors and stuff to, to make them look well, like this that, or that it, it's unbelievable. Now they, now, they, now they do a lot of that just with the special Those effects. Are, when Jamie when, when Jamie did uh, the first big movie he did was the Surrogates, uh, and the premise of that is uh, uh, people sit at the home in their easy chairs and their surrogate robots go out and live their lives and they control them all sitting in their easy chair. Uh, and the surrogates all look like young versions of themselves. Uh, so you, you've got Bruce Willis, who's now kind of an aging uh, action figure, uh -huh. uh, coming in as a young Bruce Willis with his full head of hair uh, and looking young and jumping over buildings and everything else. Well, that's all done in the computer. And so they, they shave years off of the characters for every frame of the movie uh and and it's it's just an amazing to watch because you, th you think you're you think you're watching you know yeah, I, uh, young bruce Lee. and i guess they did the same thing with that neutron movie where it was jeff bridges one of the bridges boys was in that uh 
Uh, you know, and that was made in the 70s, so, so they um, young them down uh, for the, for the backstab. Yeah. Uh, it's, 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 it's unbelievable. It's amazing. Uh, with, the, uh, with the Lincoln movie was also a uh, making of the picture uh, thing. That was shot in Richmond. Uh, Richmond, Virginia, and it was like, it was like the old state house becomes the White House, uh -huh. uh, and also the uh, House of Representatives uh, uh, for the big House of Representatives scenes because uh, it resembled the real house. And, uh, and again, they you know they, they put the false front up, and then the, everything else is manipulated. But uh, unbelievable. Anyway, there we are. And I think we've uh, come to an end of this video portion of the program. We'll be back on the radio uh, next week. Well, I think we'll pr probably keep doing this for a while if, we, if you guys are free on Friday. Or, or maybe we'll just, you know, film the radio shows and, uh, and the do radio that. Show. Do I'm going to try to now, do that anyway. Now, will the signal from the radio show reach our audience overseas? Like, cause well, at at WCSS1490.com. Uh, uh, if they want to listen to the audio. That way. Okay. Yeah. All right. yeah. So, uh, so they'll get, I mean, you know, we're, we're taking a risk here losing that audience. No, no, no. No, I, I, I plan on videoing them uh, if I can. And, uh, and, uh, and that, that'll go out to our regular audience anyway. All right. And, and of course, it'll be kind of fun because we'll be able to they take the calls too, which we can't do now. So maybe we'll be hearing people from Bulgaria and uh, No, and they, get, they got Penny Talk, they can call us. That's right. That's right. We all set. Outstanding. You know, if they've got bondage, they can probably uh, call, uh, you know, toll free. Right? Yeah. Or whatever. Or, or Joe Isabel will pick up the tab. Oh, yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yes. Call we collect. Should, we should have an 800 number they can yeah, call. Yeah, right? there you go. Do we have to negotiate with them about uh, the contract? About uh, Well, we're working on the, the thing, uh, the, the car, car uh, Parking spaces and such. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're, we're, we'll, we'll work okay. out the details of that. Right. Uh, anyway, uh, that, about, that about does it for the second hour. And uh, <laughs> I hope this was as enlightening to you as the first hour was. Uh, and uh, lots more stuff to talk about uh, next week. Uh, we haven't even talked about my book today at all. Oh, yeah. Ooh, this is the first time in a long time. But I, I, I read it. And I was going to say, did you? You get a copy. I, I did. Mm -hmm. I did. I was, I was on the computer. You sent a copy. It's on the. Right. Did you read the whole thing? Is. Yes, I did. As you, you know, your father gets in there once or yes, twice. Yes, he does. A couple uh, times. But grandfather gets in there, and all the, all the men. Uh, the community are in there. I'm and still it, working on it. I've added half a dozen stories uh, since I sent it to you and uh, rearranging some stuff. Uh, Look, looking forward to seeing the pictures. Yeah, and, uh, yeah the, and the photographs are going to obviously yeah. add a lot. But, uh, Outstanding. It's getting a little long, but I don't care. It's a good, you know. But it's a book. You want it longer because you want to keep reading it. Yeah. See? Yeah. You're, you're, you know, it's the, How did the ending hit you? I thought it was good. I thought it was a, a good rehook at the end. Yeah. I really did. Yeah. Yeah. I wrote I that a long good. time ago. I wrote the end, uh, the beginning and the end uh, it's no part, pretty but early. I, but, you, uh, know, I, you know, if you do massaging in it, I'd kind of stick away from the massage in the end. I thought, I thought the end was good. I don't think you need to massage that. Yeah. I liked it. Well, uh, I got it. Forward it to me because I don't get emails. There, there are. Uh, I sent it to you. I didn't get it. Well, I'm then look in your trash. You must have the, uh, the trash, trash out. I, I because I sent it to you the same time I sent it to Gavin. I, I look in and my. And I saw you were CC'd on it. Yeah, and you don't seem to get any of my emails, even when I, I hit reply. So yeah, I, don't, <laughs> I don't. I don't. And I don't know what's going on. I think you've got me uh, blocked. I, I, can't, think, I think you must I, have probably. Uh, uh, I gave my sister-in-law my email address. She says she sent me emails. I don't get them. Huh? Oh, I'll take I, a look and if you, if your email address is on the one I got from Bob, which it should be, it should be, and I'll send it to okay. you. Okay. Okay. And if you don't hear from me, that means I can't figure out can. why, unless it's because you've got a different email. Is it plugged oh, in? Oh, I mean, jeepers! Is it I plugged get, in? I get other people's email. All right. All right. <sighs> you got Gmail, right? Now I got Yahoo. 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 Could that be a, could that be a problem? Who knows? I don't know. Modern technology. Uh, you know, yeah, or use a different computer. Anyway, I sent you a copy of the book, and I'll uh, the next time I send it, I'll uh, send you the more updated version. And eventually, I can't really send it with all the pictures because I think the file would get too big to send by email. Uh, but uh, uh, soon, I, I'm, I'm uh, I've got only one more story to add that I'm aware of at this point, and once that's done. Uh, then I'm going to, you know, go through final editing, and and I'm going to print up 
uh, I actually have printed up some uh, proof copies. Yeah, least, so I'll probably do a dozen of those. You know, it's it's funny reading through it on the edition you sent to me. You know, all the the misspellings and all the run together words and things are highlighted in there. Oh, sure. Yeah, 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 yeah. Should I fix that? No, I better not. Yeah, yeah. No point. I'll, I'll get I'll get to those. <laughs> but that was, I, I thought that was great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Good job. Yeah. Okay. All right. So. Uh, that, that, uh, uh, there are. Uh, I, I want the book to kick you in the gut several times during the during the course of it, and I think it does. Uh, uh, and there are a couple of stories in there that are so good that they're movie worthy. Uh, but I got to tell you, the stuff I like best about the book is the stuff you gave me, because uh, I think those guys from the from the Big Old Sanford Uniteds telling their stories about what's going on yeah. in the war tells the story of the war uh, exactly as you're going on. Yeah, it, you're not. It's not being interpreted through your eyes. Yeah, it, it's, it's, yeah. It's, it's like using a diary. Uh, your your grandfather's stuff is so fresh, and your aunt's. Uh, uh, I mean, it, I wasn't going to put in originally her her story about being on VJ Day in New York, uh, but it's so good and it's so immediate that it, that, that it tells the story better than uh, than I could uh, because it's. You know, hanging hanging out on the radio and waiting for the teletype. Where was she working? She no, that was that was um, D Day in Amsterdam. Uh, no, well, no, that was a separate thing. The D Day in Amsterdam was your grandfather's thing, but your, oh, but your I, aunt I, yeah. did, the, did the VJ Day in, uh, in being in, in New, New York, York City, City and yeah. going to Times Square uh, when the, when it when it erupts. Yeah, and, uh, it just it's, it, it's wonderful stuff. Good book. Uh, anyway, so so thank the Murdoch family for my book. Uh, Actually, the stuff other people wrote in my book is probably superior to what I wrote. So, doesn't matter. It's all in there. I might, you know, you know, if they sell the uh, movie rights, I'll, I'll give them a cut. Uh, all right. So I'm Bob Going, Jim Nicosia, and Gavin Murdoch, and we'll be back next week with more of the show with no name.